Well, good morning, everybody. Good to be with you again after our week's break while we're having our week of prayer. Uh, my name's Goff, one of the leaders here at King's, and uh, my privilege this morning to take us through our devotional reading. We're going through the book, the Gospel of John, and we're getting towards the end. Uh, we're in chapter 20. Hope you're well. Hope you're looking after one another. And uh, as I say, it's lovely to be gathering in this way on a Wednesday morning. OK, so let's read from verse one of chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved, and said, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but other, the other disciple outran Peter. The other, this is John being uh, a bit modest. Um, so uh, John outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as a cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other dis disciple, John, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Really exciting chapter, uh, passage that I just read to you there. And of course, you, you, you don't need me to tell you that the, the death and resurrection of Jesus are right at the heart of uh, the Christian faith, what we believe. We've, the fact that Jesus died for us on the cross in our place to take his sin upon himself, take, sorry, take our sin upon himself, pay the, the penalty for us, but then also to rise again. And that is, is equally, if not more vital, because it, it's sort of the authentication of what's happened. He's the, God's son, not just conquering sin, but conquering death and uh, giving us a hope in the future. So we're, we're looking at the resurrection here. Now, the first thing that I, that I see here, this dear lady, Mary Magdalene, uh, She's the first there at the tomb. So I think it's, it says a lot about her, her, her affection, her love for the Lord, her gratitude. One writer put it like this. He said that Mary Magdalene, the last at the cross, the first at the tomb. And um, I think it speaks of her devotion to the Lord. She'd been forgiven much. I think somewhere we read that she'd had... There's all kind of demonic stuff going on in her lives that she was delivered from. Her life was not pretty and um, until she met Jesus and he changed her life. And of course, those who've been forgiven much love much. So it's, 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 it's actually not a bad thing to have a deep sense of our unworthiness and our, our sin. Not that it crushes, crushes us, but that it amazes us at what Jesus has done for us. And if you've never had a sense of, oh my goodness, the, the, the state of my heart, if you've never had that sense, then it will it, restrict how much we respond in gratitude and love for the Lord. So there's this dear lady forgiven much, loving much, doesn't understand, but she, she last at the cross, first at the tomb, she's there wondering what's happening. She, she's got she, her heart, she, she's got a heart for the Lord, and I want to encourage us very simply with that, our love for the Lord, uh, for what he's done, our desire to, to, to be in his presence, our desire to uh, chase after him. Of, of course, we all go through times when uh, we feel flat, in our devotions and, and so on and so forth, but having a, a heart that is after the Lord. And I, I've said several times now in recent weeks, this time of lockdown, while some of you are probably busier than ever, frontline staff, NHS, teachers and so on, at homeschooling, of course, 
nevertheless, for many, it's hopefully a time for getting good routines in place, uh, ordering your life, giving your life to things that matter most, and your devotions to the Lord are right up there at the top if you're a Christian. So there, this dear lady, loving much, just wanting to be with the Lord, that challenges me in my devotions. And then there's Peter and John, these two disciples, running to the tomb. Uh, we see something of their temperaments, don't we? And that, again, it's, it, it just shows us that in the, as Christians, our, our temperaments come into play there, the kind of people we are. And they, John gets to the tomb first, but he's sort of hanging back, pondering, wondering. And Peter, impulsive, straight in, what's going on? <laughs> um, but they're both in their own ways, just trying to... Uh, make sense of what, what what the gospel means in their lives, but there's one there's something else here that um, I think is really encouraging, and I'll, 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 I'll draw to a close with this one. It, it says here, verse eight. Finally, the other disciple John, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. That's 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 lovely. He saw and believed. So he he his heart was responsive to to the Lord. But then it says this. Um, they still did not understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. And that, that sort of encourages me that um, as Christians, so maybe we, we, you know, we, we, we don't understand it all. There'll be, hopefully we're growing in grace and knowledge of the truth if we've been a Christian a while. But you may feel, I don't know much. I don't understand the implications of it all. There, there are these two dear, dear, dear guys. They've been with with the Lord for a few years, and here's John saying, didn't, still didn't quite understand the the significance of the resurrection. He's still working it out, <laughs> and uh, that that's really encouraging. And you may not have been on the journey very long, and you may think, well, I, I don't quite understand Jesus rising again. It, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is this: that actually we're we're, we're called to joy to as it were to uh, to live this life in Christ we we have in a sense got resurrection life within us and 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 this phrase that we've been coming across in uh, st- uh, uh, preaching on Sundays in in Philippians being in Christ the life that's a, it's a wonderful phrase that speaks about being joined to Christ we haven't just been saved and forgiven but that we we have something of the the resurrection life of Jesus in us we're alive by the spirit one day we will literally rise uh, because death has been beaten when, when we breathe our last we will come into the presence of the Lord but meanwhile we could we we need to be learning to live in the good of the resurrection, the fact that Jesus is alive, that he is, he's not just close to us, he is in us. And that is so life-changing. And we, we never come to the end of what it means to be a Christian. But we should always be exploring more and, under, and having a greater sense of wonder of what it means to be a Christian and for instance when you look at books like the book to the to the Ephesians Paul just launches in the, in, in in the one long sentence actually speaking about what it means to be a Christian we've been chosen by him we, his he set his love upon us he he has predestined us giving us a hope and a future he's he, he's just, it's, a, it's one word after another, heaping up the wonders. He's lavished his grace and kindness on us. And let me, let me finish with this thought. Never lose the wonder of what it means to be a Christ one, a Christian. The fact that Jesus is alive. That he's our, our Lord and Saviour. And on a daily basis, we have the opportunity to live our lives in him. Lord, I want to walk with you today. I want you to prompt me and and speak to me and encourage me. Let's have that heart as we go into today and into the rest of the week. Let's live out this beautiful resurrection life that is ours because Jesus is alive. God bless you, church family. And uh, actually, I'll see you again tomorrow morning.
Have a good day.